All right, mate, I'm Elle. That's me there in the orange trousers. And you can see I'm hiking with a lady called Emma. She's in the black trousers. Neither of us have any shoes on, and that's because we're attempting the Welsh 3000s completely barefoot. Now, the Welsh 3000s is a route that covers the 15 tallest mountains in Wales, all of those over 3,000 feet. Our original plan was to attempt to do it all as part of one unbroken journey over three days, starting in the Snowdon Range, moving on to the Glidderai Range, and then on to the Carnedi Range on the third day. But as you'll see as we go through this video, an awful lot didn't go to plan. One of those things is that I lost my GoPro at the beginning of the second day, which means I lost all of my good A-roll footage and audio that I'd recorded on the day. So most of this video, not all of it, most will be voiceovered, but there's an awful lot I'd like to cover. Since we did this route way back in April, I've been sharing parts of it online and I've had an awfully mixed reception. Everything from, wow, that's impressive, that's really cool, to you're stupid, you're an idiot, and that's really dangerous. So I'm hoping that by the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of my own mindset, the training that we went through, how we prepared ourselves, how we kept ourselves safe, and everything like that that goes with it. If you have any questions, please feel so free to ask. If you have any opinions, positive or negative, I'm so keen to hear them. I find it fascinating to see how other people perceive this. So anyway, let me tell you about the route. Day one, we started down at the Penny Pass car park and made our way up the beginning of the pig track, which then separates to become Cribgok, which is like the knife edge ridge line um, that goes up one side towards the Snowden summit. It's a grade one scramble, which means that at times you are required to use your hands and it's no longer just a hike. Now, this is one of the things that people had the most to say about because it is objectively a dangerous place to be. Uh, people commonly fall and die up here. And if you fall, you're highly likely to die. That being said, I've been up this ridge line many, many times in all, all sorts of weather. And in fact, it wasn't my first time doing this section of the route barefoot. I've got another video on my page that you could watch after this where I attempted to do Kribgok uh, the year prior in the summer. That was my first ever like very intense mountain, you know, barefoot hike and it went swimmingly. So that is kind of what inspired me to go on and attempt this Welsh 3000s route. I wanted something that was a bit of a bigger, longer challenge and I thought if I was going to do something that's so that draws so much attention that I could do it for charity. So that's what we've done. And I'm going to leave the link for our charity donation page in the description. Uh, so if you're interested in donating, that would be that would be amazing. So that's it. I'm doing Welsh 3000s barefoot. This is the weather. This is Kribgok. <laughs> Thank God you can't really get lost on the ridge line. Uh, look, it's super cool, Em. Oh my goodness. Look at that total wipeout. <laughs> wipe out, wipe out, can't see a thing. So I can completely appreciate when people see videos like this one of the big drop on either side and I'm barefoot, why they would be concerned and immediately jump to, that's really dangerous and that's irresponsible. And a lot of people have said that I'm putting the lives of mountain rescue and you know rescue service workers, uh, volunteers in fact, at risk. And that that's hurtful and upsetting to me, honestly, because that was... Our number one priority on this trip was to not put ourselves into a position where any kind of, you know, rescue was going to have to happen and people would have to come out and, you know, they somebody else ha would have to deal with the consequences of our decision. We, we took this route very slowly and very steadily. We both had shoes in our bag and we had a small support team on us so that somebody could help if we needed help to get off the mountain. Of course, objectively it's still dangerous and you can fall off but I feel like I'm less likely to fall or trip than somebody like barefoot than somebody who is wearing inappropriate footwear or sandals or badly fitting trainers or something like that I think you're an awful lot more likely to have a problem than I am barefoot one of the reasons I love being barefoot so much is the level of focus that it brings you because of course there's that chance you're going to step on a stone the wrong way and it's going to sort of make you flinch um, or something like that. But it really draws your mind in to every step that you're taking. So I am far more focused when I do this route barefoot than I ever have been doing it in shoes. And that's one of the main reasons that I, I think objectively it's not, not safer. Certainly I wouldn't say that it's safer, but I wouldn't say that it's inherently more dangerous. What do you, what do you think about that? I'm, I'm curious as to your opinion. 
So anyway, the route so far, this is actually our second summit. The first one is somewhere on Quibgok, but obviously we were just keeping it moving on the ridge line. And it's quite hard to identify the actual moment that you're at the top, especially because we were in this whiteout, so you can't, you don't really have any reference of what's around you. I would have liked to show you a video from that point um, at the summit we were just at, because you can actually look across and Snowden is almost exactly level with you. But what you actually have to do is walk down to that sign there in the halls, and then you make your way around and the path gets quite, um, it's a constructed path all of a sudden. So it's like big, flat, round stones that are quite comfortable to walk on. There was no queue, fortunately, because it was not the middle of summer. And as you can see, the weather was foul. Um, so we could walk basically straight up to the top and, and celebrate and get a few photos. That felt like such an accomplished moment. We were at the highest point in Snowdonia, the highest point on our whole journey. And now all we had to do was the descent. I think we made it up in about four hours and we were hoping we were just going to smash it down really quickly. That was a dream which was not to come true. So my experience so far had been f feeling kind of on top of the world. I knew that I could do Krivgok because I'd done it before, you know. Um, and up until the summit of Snowden, I was feeling honestly on top of the world and my feet were feeling great. It wasn't until I started descending that I started losing my mind a little bit. I, I really thought that the descent was going to be straightforward, easy, and no problem whatsoever. What it actually was, was painful, uncomfortable, and slow. I think the gravity, just like slamming down on your feet the whole time, is it feels like an extra kind of pounding than when you're going uphill, which is a lot sort of more slow and controlled. And you find yourself always falling onto rocks, you know, so they, they end up like jabbing you in the heel or like hitting you in the tendons. and. It was highly uncomfortable. I really thought we were going to make much quicker progress, but we were just skirting across, trying to find any opportunity to walk on the grass or flat stones rather than gravel, because most of this descent is on a horrible gravelly path, which is just... <laughs> honestly, when you've been hiking barefoot all day, it just feels like sandpaper, and it's really quite uncomfortable. So we made our way most of the way down the Flamberis track, and then we turned off right so that we could cut down to the road in the valley sort of as quickly as possible. We thought this would be a shortcut, but it turned out not to be that, mostly because the the type of terrain just went from like fairly comfortable, like flattish pathish, to like spiky dead plants, which are I I didn't think that would be so uncomfortable to walk on, but it was so. That was the end of it. I did unfortunately cut my foot on some barbed wire as I hopped a fence that shouldn't have been there. Naughty landowners, there should not have been barbed wire across that fence because it was a right of way. Um, but that's what happened. So we made it down to the bottom, soaked our feet in the lake for a little bit, and just honestly, I got such an early night on this night. I just we just crashed in the back of the in the back of the car. We didn't even set up our tent. That was it. Day one completed. Feeling super proud already. On to day two. We started the day driving up the valley, bumping some music. The views were gorgeous, obviously. And we had a stunning sight of Krivgok, which we just summited the day before. You see those three humps there? Crazy stuff. This is the exact moment that I left my GoPro behind on the star behind me. I just walked away from it. So that was, yeah, that was a, a mental challenge in itself to deal with. I spent a lot of this day in tears, not just because I was obviously very uncomfortable. My feet were really swollen from the day before. Emma's were black and blue and purple and all sorts of weird colours. But that was just kind of a horrible way to start the day. These lads and like one or two other dog walkers had followed up behind us, but they all said they hadn't seen it. So that was a very unfortunate and expensive loss to start my day on. Hey ho, we keep moving. So the first mountain we were summiting was very simple. Most of the way up was sort of grassy. Um, with yeah a little bit of sort of rock thrown in right at the top um but it was fairly straightforward i borrowed these poles as well from emma's support guy who had driven us that day and that that made a huge difference so this first summit was a bit of a slog but it came fairly quickly i must say at, the, the, at this point i was already kind of wondering how i was supposed to finish the rest of the day my feet had been so sore the night before fortunately in that first sort of hour or two that it took to, us to get up to the tops they sort of warmed up and warmed into it and I feel like I just reverted to like halfway through the day before or something. So while it was highly uncomfortable, sort of the further I went on from this point, the more confident I was feeling like, yeah, I'm just going to be able to power through this. It's not a problem. So that was it. Off the top of a litter four. 
and you come around the valley into yet another whiteout. This is also kind of a long slog just to get around. It's quite a lot of distance you have to cover for no real gain or achievement. Um, and again, a lot of these paths were sort of rocky and gravelly, so we spent as much time as we could just trying to walk on the grassy sides. And a lot of time, that was really relieving, because you, you would find these, like, thick, mossy patches, which were, like, really cool, you know, cold and wet, and that was, like, soothing on your feet as you walked through it. So that's that's what we were hunting for on our way up. One thing I haven't mentioned, actually, is how me and Emma came to be a pair, and that was only because when I was researching to do the Welsh 3000s Barefoot, I was trying to find if anybody else had ever done it before, and the only person I could ever find that had attempted it was Emma, who tried one year earlier, but she had to come off the mountain, I think, after her 11th summit because of bad weather, so I got in touch with her, and yeah, we decided to do it together. It turned out to be a really great pairing. But we've passed Elida 4 now, that was way behind us in the mist. And we're on our way up to Egarn. We're making a good pace, to be fair. I was quite terrified last night because my feet were in exceptional pain. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. They cooled down and now that I've like warmed up again, it seems to be going fine and I'm feeling surprisingly good. Um, morale has been quite low today after noticing that I lost the GoPro, but it's okay. I feel like I'm getting over it now and just getting on with it. Um, yeah, we're moving. What an absolute beast of a mountain we're approaching. That's the summit we're going for. Yeah, there's Triffin over there, look. So that'll be our final mountain of the day. We've got two more <laughs> in between this one and that one. Let's do it. One of the demoralizing things about being up there was how much faster everybody else was moving than us. Like, there were runners or normal hikers and they would just overtake us at some crazy pace. And then we saw these really cool guys, paragliders. Uh, there was some big, I don't know what it was, like event that was going on. They, they all told me and I can't remember now, but we were just watching them, you know, lift their sail and just disappear off into the valley. And it was, it was so cool to watch, don't get me wrong, but it was just making me mega jealous that everybody has transport options, which seemed far preferable <laughs> to what I was going through um, at the same time. Getting up to Egan was an absolute beast. It, yeah, felt like a slog and really rocky and rough on the way up. A fresh set of tears, we made it to the summit of Egan. And we've got actually some views and a nice little shelter here, bench to sit on. We're not gonna spend long here though, we're gonna head down to the Tarn, yeah, down there and then have lunch. Um, before we head up into the Glidders, yeah, amazing. Oh, this is so hot. Come on, actually, come on. <laughs> Well done. Well done. Well done. Keep it off. Appreciate that. Thank you. That was it. Yeah, we've got Savage support, which is great. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's it. You can see them. Oh my goodness. You can see them better. You can see them better. Can ball, in case you didn't really get what was going on there, some very nice Irish guy at the summit of Egan just offered us a hug, which at that moment I clearly desperately needed, like any kind of morale boost was going to be so welcome. We made our way down, it felt like we were rocketing down actually towards this little lake for lunch, and by some complete coincidence, the moment we sat down, uh, a really good old friend of mine. Uh, Rory walked past with his girlfriend and they were on a hike and just, we saw them and had a great conversation, which was yet another amazing morale boost. Completely necessary at that moment and just lovely. Okay, I'm in a, bit, I'm in a slightly better mood now for, for a little while. Uh, where did we just come from? Up there, that's not actually the summit, but that was Egan, which was our second summit of the day. The summit overall. And behind us, you can't even see the summit up there either, but. Up there, it's the rocky glitters, which are going to be <laughs> horrible. Um, we've got the glitters and then Triffin and then done for the day. We're just having lunch. Um, oh, by the beautiful town as well. Oh, you can barely see it. There we go. Look, we've sat by the lake. I've got to even point it out. It's not gorgeous. A great big mountain behind it. Ooh, nice. Yeah, this is hard. Life is hard. Everything's hard. The next section of the route that we had to move on to had been my biggest fear from the moment that I'd considered even doing this route. Basically, the Glidders are a beautiful pair of mountains that sort of stand next to each other, but 
to get up onto them requires you to to go over this ridiculous rocky gravelly scree path it's very wide completely unavoidable and these stones they're not small enough to be gravel and they're not big enough to be like boulders that you can step on they move they shift under your feet the corners dig into your tendons when you're least expecting it they're rough it's honestly so unenjoyable it was really slow moving up here i think it's a good 300 meters or so of ascent from the level of um the lake that we had lunch at up until the summit and we it was one of those like nuss up or shut up moments we just had to buckle down and get it done it wasn't fun i knew it wasn't going to be fun and it made me honestly very concerned and wary because on the other side of the glitters you have exactly the same thing going down and if yesterday had taught me anything it's that going down turns out to be way worse than going up so as much as I was not enjoying this, honestly, it was just sort of filling me with dread for what was to come later. But it was fine. We got our head down. We got to the top. It just becomes a big sort of rocky summit like this that you have to scramble onto the top of. And before you know it, we were, yeah, celebrating yet another summit. Now, when I'm not barefoot and I'm not having to suffer over the rocks and scree and stuff and I'm feeling nice and stable... This is normally one of my favourite pairs of mountains, like, anywhere in Snowdonia. It's so enjoyable, because you get up to the first one, and it's almost like two for the price of one. It's a very small, not even 100 metre sort of descent and reascent onto the next mountain, with beautiful views all around you. There's just... What's not to like? I mean, look behind us, you can see Snowdon and Cribgok just there in the distance. Wonderful summit. Summit. It's the first time, the whole time you've been able to see where we've been before. So we actually yesterday started down here, came all the way up to do Kribgok, and that's Garnad again, and we came down and up again for Snowden, and then down the other side. And then today we started our first, oh you can't see it now, but just there would be a Lidafor, and then Egan. Came up to, yep, just here is Glitter 4, I think. And then this big pile of stones now, we're on his Glitter Fack. Pretty cool. Very stunning views. And that was, to be honest, the last time I had any kind of fun that day. In our, like, tiredness and our eagerness to get going, we went off the summit in 180 degrees the wrong direction. Had to find our way back around and then, and then the clouds came in and it just became a little bit of a nightmare. So check this out. Navigating has become really difficult. As you can see, this is literally, we could see it 10 minutes ago, there's so many rocks here, you just can't see any of them. Um, we just took a bit of a wrong turn in and we're correcting that now. Um, yeah. So we managed to find our way. We had, you know, GPS and maps and everything on us and that was one thing. But then, you know, I said earlier about we were gonna have to descend the same kind of scree path that we'd come up. Well, that was, that was this. This is truly some of the saddest footage that exists of me. By this point, I was in so much pain and the scree path that we were on was like horribly unstable. You can see the rocks falling there. A lot of the rocks are the size of your foot. So when they roll onto your foot, like that pain, I really can't describe. And genuinely, I felt scared. I felt a little bit unsafe. I was not stable. I had to go down on my bum. Emma went down like truly on her bum. She slid down super determined and ripped the arse out of her trousers. Um, and I was determined to get to the bottom, but then this is this is how I felt. Coming down from Clitter Fack is the scree path, which was literally the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Um, and now we're down here, it's very late. It's half six now, and the sun goes down at half eight. Um, and I think it's going to take me two hours to get down. Um, let alone, like, way up there. It's Truffin, which would have been our final summit for the day. Um, and um, bless her, she's jogging off there now. She's doing a bit better than me. Um, and she just said she's going to try and uh, summit and then come down with her boots on, which is amazing. I just, I just know with the, um, basically I said when I started this that my number one priority is not to call me a rescue. And I feel like I was getting into that kind of territory with all the screen that's still left to go. So, um, yeah, carry on tomorrow. Um, 
and hopefully we'll have done 14 out of 15 <laughs> the Welsh 3000s uh, yeah so that was it I made the decision to go down before the final summit of the day and that was the end of my dream of doing the Welsh 3000s barefoot all in one unbroken journey fortunately we were blessed with a gorgeous cloud aversion and some very nice like scenes to go down so as much as I was hurting I did just try and enjoy the rest of the day I'm still in a gorgeous place having a gorgeous hike so that was it morning so I didn't film anything I don't think when I got back last night um but we got down like the sun had set and it was just at the point where it was getting dark you know for me I really feel like I made the right decision like for my to be honest my safety based on my own risk tolerance um Emma went up to the top of Triffin I'm so so proud of her I'm really happy that she did um she got down that scree path like way faster than me way more confidently than me um and just still had loads of energy and and stuff so she basically ran up Triffin I don't know I don't know where she pulled that from but it's, it's so impressive it's amazing um but now we've got to this morning and since about 4 a.m it has been pissing with rain <laughs> it's just been yeah bucketing it down all night right now it's stopped actually I feel like I wish I had rain sounds for dramatic effect um and I'm just working on making the decision as to whether to go or not. And I think that the decision looks like it's a no. That being said, we have discussed this morning and having um, having missed out Triven yesterday, we, we were talking about, you know, doing the rest today and then come back in a week or two and do Triven. But I think what's going to happen is I'll just split the whole challenge kind of in half. So we've already done the first half. When we come back, we'll do Triffin and we can do um, the Kynedal range and hope for the best. Um, yeah, that's, that's where we're at. The final <laughs> foot check of this hot. They are swollen. They are swollen beyond belief. Like, just a little description of how they feel. Like, obviously, all of the main, pre ow, all of the main pressure points, like the heel all over very sore and the edges like surprisingly like the edges i guess i don't know if there's like a weird pressure that comes around here that's painful <laughs> weirdly down the sides i didn't think down here would hurt but this hurts and this doesn't get much pressure but that's where all the cuts are so that hurts and then like i mean obviously the ball of my foot because that's i don't really heel strike much when i'm barefoot walking i walk on the ball of my foot so right up here and like the underside of my big toe like that's very very painful and i have literally this spot here under my second toe weirdly is like seems to be taking most of the brunt of it because i even am starting to form a callus on both but both feet rather and then also the tips of my toes especially my fourth toe because that's the one that curls in the most you know so when i'm walking it kind of gets a little bit battered over the top that was yeah that's what hurts um Although I still think, especially knowing how they felt yesterday morning, that I'd have been able to to hike it. But this, this is all just a bit shit. So, yeah.